<laughs> I just felt like we needed a little extra dancing today. I'm bored. I'm bored. It's been a long two years. Let's dance a little bit, right? Right. I was um, reading an article in, it was neurological. I'll have to look it up. But it was really about how when we dance and we move, mm -hmm. that it brings on creativity and flexibility and it just sparks things in us that would otherwise not be sparked. Yeah. And, you know, I know that to be true as an inner player and a dancer and a mover, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I'll have to put a link to that in our show notes. I totally forgot about that article until we started dancing. I'm like, oh, I could do this all day. Yeah. You know, that's one of my wisdom and action for this year is to dance more. So I've been dancing. I've been dancing. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Should we do our intro and yeah, jump into so this show? Let's say hey to the ladies. Hi, ladies. Let's do it. I am Shannon Mitchell, a Black millennial business owner, the creator and founder of Shayla Glow LLC, a handmade shea butter company. I'm your advocate for natural self care and practical business systems. Hey, y'all, I'm Christine Gotro, a white social justice advocate, an international speaker, coach, a dancing social worker, and Ooh. published author who helps you upgrade yourself and community care. Yes, and together we are Women Connected in Wisdom, a podcast grounded in the eight dimensions of wellness. We love to get together every week to have intentional conversations about how to be wise in business, relationships, and wellness. Yeah. Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year. Right? I know we've said it like a couple of times. I am still savoring our show last week and celebrating our one year anniversary and our 50th episode. Yes. I just smiled. Like, I even just still thinking about it, I was like, okay, this is why we do what we do. Yeah. That we meet these incredible women, mm. we get to hear their stories. We get to hear the incredible work that they're doing in the world. And together we lift each other up. And to be part of all of it. We get to be part of their stories. We get to be part of so Terry and her tables that she's doing in Virginia and the Roots and Wings and Joe with the drumming. And I love it. Right? Yes. Right? Yeah. Even our guests that we were talking to before, I said, oh, we have a, a whole nother year of, of new guests and new connections on the way. I'm excited. Right. And some good ones, y'all. Some good ones. Yeah. We had a little mix up today. Mercury is in retrograde for those of y'all that follow that. And uh, our guest today is actually coming next week, which we're excited to have her on then. But in the meantime, we're going to do a little talking about financial wellness because yes. it's a new year. Mercury is in retrograde, which often, often means finances get a little. Mm -hmm. So you want to give us the definition and then we'll jump into it, Shannon? Absolutely. So for financial wellness, capturing a complete definition is tricky because it means different things to different people. At its most basic level, financial wellness is a holistic approach to counter financial illness. The holistic approach includes a combination of factors such as satisfaction with current finances, Increasing positive financial behaviors like saving, reducing debt, and budgeting. Financial knowledge that helps to change behavior. Reduce financial stress and creation of a financial plan to reach desired financial goals. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I listen to you when you read that every eight weeks or nine yeah. weeks yeah. and different things stick out to me at different times. Mm. You know, what stuck out this time was that it counters financial illness. Mm -hmm. Cause I know like I, I immediately thought of the patterns that run in my family mm. and thought, Oh, that's a financial illness born yeah. of our ancestors, not yeah. what's actually true today. Mm -hmm. Like, cause in my family, we weren't supposed to talk about money and we didn't have money mm -hmm. and that like, and I catch myself sometimes being like, Oh, and I'm like, what are you talking about woman? Like you got a car, you got a house, your bills are paid. You got money. Right. right. Yeah. But I, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. You were still well, I was just saying, but you know, a lot of my ancestors did not 
yeah. truly did not, but mm -hmm. kept passing that down to generations. We don't talk about money. We don't have money. We don't, you know, mm -hmm. um, and if you talk about it, people will take it from you. Mm -hmm. So that's a financial illness. Mm -hmm. Just diagnosing my family right here on air. <laughs> I hear you, but it's important. You know, I've been working through the, the, Financial Peace University and the baby steps. And that was what one of the lessons was about this week is um, realizing where the fears come from, realizing where the mindsets come from. And it really even shed some light on the way that I was thinking about things with COVID. I've shared with you ladies how I had to move immediately when the restaurant shut down. I said, oh, well, it doesn't matter what happens with the memoratorium or if they forgive part of the rent, I'm not even going to have it for next month. So I don't need it to stack up, not even for one month. I've got to go. And I was talking about specifically putting my stuff in trash bags. I said, I don't want to move and have my stuff in trash bags. That's how it was when we had to move so many times when I was growing up. And it wasn't just the letting go of the space that I had for myself or the having to move spur the moment. It was the financial instability of you didn't set yourself up enough to be able to stay. So the financial plan is actually what stuck out to me this week. Like you said, we read the definition and different parts sticks out because before I would have thought that the budget is the plan. And even though that's still true, there's different parts of it, right? You can have a, a plan to invest and then that's going to help you reach certain financial goals and you have part of your budget for investing, but that's not the budget itself. I wouldn't have been able to articulate that two years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article in prep for the show today and um, doing a little shooting all over myself, to be honest. Yeah. So I want to admit that to our listeners. And, and as we have this conversation, because, you know, financial conversations can be hard. Like it brings up stuff, right? Yeah. Shame or blame or guilt. Mm -hmm. And um, this article was use this checklist to get your finances in order before 2022. And I was like, oh, I'm late. I'm yeah. late. It's yeah. January 19th. I'm late. Mm -hmm. So Shannon and I were having this conversation before the show. Like, no, we're not late. Take a deep breath. It's right on time. But what you're saying, what I want to, what I want to point to this is in their article, they talked about make time for a life audit. Mm -hmm. And it said, try something a little fun, which, you know, I'm all in. And if we can make finances fun, I'm definitely in. Yeah. It says, if you haven't done so already, make time for a life audit. During this process, you basically list out all your goals, short-term and long-term, but you do it on post-it notes, mm -hmm. right? That way you can reprioritize them and they give a breakdown of how to do it. And I'll put a link to that all in our show notes, but um, really playing with it, like yeah. letting go of some of our judgment of ourself and, and others and playing with it. Like, what do we want to create this year? Mm -hmm. What and do I we want to do? And there's so much, you know, and I think that's part of where the anxiety comes from when I think about goals or what I want to do. And it's everything on the list, let's say the to do list. Right. But really, you, you have to prioritize it. What makes sense? So I moved out of my apartment. Right. Got rid of stuff I didn't need, wasn't using. I've lost all this weight and kept it off, which means that leggings were too big. Stuff was too big. So now I've had to rebuild my wardrobe. Right. But if we're not really going out as much and now I'm going back to work, well, I need, well, before I was going back to work, I need to work out stuff, right? I was running four times a week. So that was the priority. Then I went back to work. So now we need work clothes. Of course, I want fashion over outfits and billowing yellow silk dresses, but I don't need that right now. We're not going to a ball right now. So that helped me prioritize my financial steps and say, okay, first we put the money here and then we put the money there and it gets rid of the anxiety and um, it helps you have fun with it and cross stuff off your to-do list. Well, and you can reward yourself with yeah. that uh, yellow silk I gown yeah, once you wait. meet a certain, you know, yeah. level. Yeah. yeah. After we get through the certain steps and that's where we are and that's what our time is being used for, it'll be time for that. and It'll be easy to take care of. I love that. I yeah. love that. Well, another um, article I came across as we were prepping for today was called Five Tips to Improve Your Financial Wellness in 2022. 
And this was from a money magazine called The Street. And mm -hmm. we'll put a link to it in our show notes. But I just wanted to go. They have five quick tips. Yeah. You're going to love number three. And it actually breaks down even more. So mm -hmm. it may take the rest of our show for us to get through this. But mm -hmm. I wanted us to talk about it. Because there's some things. And y'all, we looked at several resources for y'all this week and one of them we were like oh no mm -mm. Mm -mm. there's some out there like you got to know yourself and where are you on the path mm -hmm. and where where do you want to be and it's okay to take incremental steps it's okay to start right where you are and and go from there so mm -hmm. number one you and i both had some opinions about but i'll just read it and then we'll go from there yeah. automating to save time and headaches Automating your finances to take the headache out of financial tests. Let's look at reoccurring contributions to an investment account as an example. Now, both you and I were like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to start with automating our bills. Right. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> but you can, with reoccurring contributions, you can set it up and grow your portfolio. And right. you can learn more about this in this article. But, y'all, if you're not already automating, like, your bank account... And things like Mint, we've talked about Mint on the show several times. It's an awesome. app that can help you budget. Use those tools. Like use what you're comfortable with, but also you may want to learn them. I will tell you as somebody who was diagnosed with ADHD in college and finances have not been my strong suit. Like mm -hmm. it is not something that, but I will tell you automatic banking changed my life and my credit score for the good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like nice. So... Yeah, I highly recommend it. And if you need help, your banks will help you. Like you can go in and there are people that are paid to help you with that. So don't be afraid to call and make an appointment. Yeah. And and not to minimize what the article says either, right? I look forward to after I pay off my car, moving that money over. And now just like I was automatically spending it, I can automatically put it into an investment account, you know, where the money will grow. I actually just shared a post last night on my Instagram about that, how um, this person found out that their $339 car note, if they would put it in account after 30 years, it would be like $500,000 instead of putting it into a brand new car, which automatically loses its value. And so your money is going to be worth less instead of worth exponentially more. But again, in the meantime, you know, if we're automating, then there's different levels that it can help us on. Absolutely. Well, I love that idea because yeah. I don't think about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I know that my husband's 401k, we're lucky enough that he has it through his corporation. Right. Yeah. Cause he's not an entrepreneur, right. <laughs> you know, and so that's automated. So we don't have to think about it. So I need to think about that for myself. Like, yeah. I mean, even if it's 50 bucks or, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that could be that could be very doable. So I'm going to do a little research on this. That may be my wisdom in action this week yeah. is is research on this. So number two talks a little bit more about investing. It talks about diversifying to minimize your risk. It says you've heard people say don't put all your eggs in one basket, whether they know it or not. They're promoting diversification. It is one of the cornerstones of financial wellness. It says this method used by investors for generation reduces risk by spreading investments across various categories. So a real world example uh, that they give is if you're only invested in two companies and one crashes, you'd lose half your investment. If you're invested in 20 companies and one crashes, you'd lose 5% of your investment. I mean, it makes sense. Common sense. Yeah. I also think about it as, do you invest in real estate? Do you invest in the stock market? Like, what do you do? You, you know, right. do Roth RIA, IRAs, but those mm -hmm. are, you know, all of that. Absolutely. All right. I want to get to number three because you are going to love this, my friend. <laughs> number three, learn something new about finances. Whether you're a savvy market veteran or opening your first bank account, learning more about finances can help. Here are a few ways for you to continue your financial education. Now, there's five of them, but we're going to go, we may go on a little bit of a tangent here. Okay. If you're a reader, pick up one of the following. This is what you're going to love. 12 smart personal finance books to mm -hmm. add to your reading list. Are you I'm ready? I'm ready yeah. I know we're going to see because you read a lot of financial books. That's why I was like, you are going to be thrilled about this. Mm 
Hmm. Number one is The Intelligent Investor, the definitive book on value investing by Benjamin Graham. So billionaires Warren Buffett and Charles Brands credit Benjamin Graham's investing philosophies with making their fortunes possible. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So okay. worth it. They uh, In this book, he teaches the art of finding undervalued stocks and buying them at low prices. Mm -hmm. And Buffett has compared Graham's strategy to snapping up hamburger meat on snail. <laughs> what does that mean? On sale. Snapping it up on sale. Sorry. Oh, on sale. On sale. S-A-L-E. <laughs> I was no. like, is Neil some type of financial lingo? I don't know. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> okay. I just mispronounced the word, right? No, that's okay. um, number two book. It's exciting for our listeners. Mm -hmm. Women with Money. The mm -hmm. Judgment-Free Guide to Creating the Joyful, Less Stress, Purposeful, and in parentheses, and Yes, Rich, Life mm -hmm. You Deserve. By Jean, and I hope I pronounced her last name right, Chotsky. Mm -hmm. So she is the CEO and co-founder of Her Money. Mm. And she has a reputation for telegraphing no-nonsense clarity and wisdom through many channels, including the Her Money podcast mm -hmm. and the Today Show. Mm. We, we ought to see if we can get her to come on and talk to us. Yeah. That would be super fun. This is the quote out of this book. Anyone who tells you women don't need financial advice specifically for them is wrong. Mm -hmm. Women, whether they're the caretakers, the breadwinners, or both, face a unique set of financial challenges. Woo. Absolutely. It, Jean. I don't. So so let's take a second, right? And this, yep. is, this is my thing about money, is if we're supposed to go to school, to make money, and that's everybody, right? They don't just mm -hmm. tell men to go to school and stay in school. They tell everybody to go to schools mm -hmm. and you get a good job, why would we not need to know about money? Even if we're a caretaker, right? If I can be more strategic about the way that I order a prescription for my daughter and it saves $72 a month, that's gonna add up over the year. That could have been investment or um, a date night out or part of a trip or something else. And so if we, we have that information, we can be more strategic and intentional with the rest of our lives. It makes sense. I am really attracted to number two for a couple of reasons mm -hmm. where it says the judgment free. Cause we yeah. all judge ourselves mm -hmm. like, right. Mm -hmm. We, we do. And creating joyful, less stressed and purposeful. Yeah. I think I'm going to get this book on audible. Yeah. It's important. And it is stressful, you know, because this is what we spend our, our time on. This is what we talk about the rat race. That's what I think about with um, financial wellness is the, the cash flow board game that I've been playing and it teaches you how to get out of the waiting for the payday and then onto the fast track and how to invest and do all this different stuff. But that this is what keeps us from children, from spouses, from the things and passions that we would do if money wasn't a question. So of course it's, right. it's stressful sometimes. All right. I'm excited about these resources, y'all. We're going to have to report back. And if you are one of our listeners and you are watching or listening, let us know if you've read some of these books mm -hmm. or if you recommend them mm -hmm. and um, or if there's any others that you recommend. All right. Number three, you are a badass at making money by Jen Sincero. Mm -hmm. I might have been sincerely pronouncing that wrong, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> um, it says part of the multi-book badass series, the Making Money volume concentrates on the attitudinal side of earning and personal finance. Mm -hmm. Once readers take an inventory of their roadblocks and mental blocks, uh, ooh, 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 doesn't want to come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Sincero invites them to develop abundance from the inside out. Mm -hmm. I have heard about her before. Yeah, I've heard, I think I've heard of the series. I don't know if right? I knew it was a money book, but I'm for it. All right. I like it. it. Says part of this lies in changing the self-talk script. Much of it stems from learning to laugh at yourself. Sincero, who still lived in a converted garage at age forty, puts it like this: "If my broke ass can get rich, you can too." Converted garage, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I like her already. Yeah, we should ask her to come on too. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know that I'm going to run through all of them. I'll run through the topics and or and 
and you tell me if you've read them or like, so number four is Zero Debt, The Ultimate Guide to Financial Freedom by Lynette Kalfani Cox. I Can I just stop and say, out of the first four, the top three were women writers. That's a, that's a change. That's true. From some of the things we were looking at last year or mm -hmm. the year before. I am really excited to see this. And I honestly, and I know President's Day is coming up. I was thinking about our vice president, but I think that we can expect to see that in this presidency, honestly, is more women and women of color in general. Right. Because of the landscape. Yeah. I love this. Because when we looked for resources a year ago, these were not That's a good point. available. Mm -hmm. All right. Number five is The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Clausen. I didn't know if a book was going to be on there that I'm reading. I'm actually reading it right now. Yes. Okay. Okay. How is it? It's really good. And, um, you know, I've read the seven habits of highly effective people in a couple of different books and I see how they overlap, but it's good. Okay. Number six, rich habits, the daily success habits of wealthy individuals by Thomas Corley CPA. He did a five year study on wealthy people. Mm. And it, he said it all distilled into 10 principles that a majority of them follow. Hmm. It says, but before you dive in, you might want to ask yourself what's on your to-do list. Mm. He said, Corley found that four and five rich people keep such lists in rich detail with two thirds of them completing 70% or more of their daily task. Also, this is interesting to note. Only 23% of wealthy watch more than an hour of TV a day, which leaves them per to pursue more other activities that broaden their financial horizons, such as, yes, reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's really important, you know, and I, I think that with TV and entertainment, it, it gives, it's, it's another form of being told what to do instead of thinking about what to do for yourself. That's how I feel yeah. about it. I think it's necessary for entertainment, like we talk about taking a break and not always being on, um, but 40 hours a week of TV is a whole work week. We could be doing more with the time. What was that? I'm having a moment. I know we talked about it probably close to a year ago, that documentary about social media and how it purposely keeps us picking up our phones and I think I know what you're talking about. I think I watched it. I don't remember the name of it either. But know, right. Yeah. But how it really talks about it promotes addictive behavior. So yeah. like if you're if you're giving yourself a hard time, don't give yourself a hard time. Just yeah. notice the pattern. Right. And see where you can start making some small shifts, right? Absolutely. Number eight on this list, The Automatic Millionaire, a powerful one-step plan to live and finish rich by Dave Bach. It says, if you can get past the cheesy jacket photo, huh. <laughs> then you're about to learn some bedrock million wisdom. All right. I don't know. That one, I don't know if it's just, I don't know. I have a little judgment about that title. Uh, right. Number nine, I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramet Sethi. Um, he's a personal finance advisor and entrepreneur and founder of Growth Lab, mm -hmm. helping people turn their niche skills into viable businesses. All right. That's interesting. And then number 10, Tiny Habits, The Small Changes That Change Everything by B.J. Fogg, Ph.D. You know I'm going to like that one because I like tiny changes and incremental steps. Yeah. And it is an inspiration for two M1 blogs in September. It, tiny Habits describes how incremental small actions over time easily sidestep the anxiety and all or nothing thinking that too often frees us in our track. Yes. I love that. Yeah. That's cool. Number 11. How many of these are there? 12. Okay. I was like, yes. geez, Louise. <laughs> Number 11. The Psychology of Money. Timeless Lessons on Wealth, Greed, and Happiness by Morgan Household. Okay. That's cool. And then it's 19 short stories in that book, um, mm -hmm. exploring the strange ways that people think about money mm -hmm. and focuses them into actionable advice. And then number 12, Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones by James Clear. 
This is talking about the psychology to help people build smart, sustainable habits yeah. and that don't rely on motivation. Mm -hmm. I like that. And I haven't read this book, but I've heard it. And from what I understand of it, this is exactly what I try to do. You know, when you yeah. and I started this podcast, we were like, we don't want to overwhelm people. We don't want it to feel like work. It's going to feel like so much. But that's why we repeatedly go through all eight every right. every few weeks. Right. And when you make it second nature, it doesn't tap into the well of your willpower anymore because it's just what you do. And it right. sounds like at some point, that's what all 12 of these books are going to be talking about. Right. Well, it's also about the embodying of it, right? Like the yeah. being able to have the conversation, the be, you know, you and I've had this conversation when we talk about anti-racist work, like mm -hmm. being able to say the words and have the conversation and have the discussion, yeah. um, financial wellness, being able to talk about your finances mm -hmm. and have a conversation and, I was on an interplay class uh, this last week and you know how we do, I could talk about back and forth where yeah. you say something. And one of the players I was playing with said, I could talk about the financial meeting that uh, I'm supposed to have with my husband after this um, call because mm -hmm. our finances are a mess and how let's just keep interplaying. Right? <laughs> but when she said it, and, and I'm sure I'm butchering exactly the way she said it, but when she said it, my whole body relaxed mm -hmm. because you know how often we think, Oh, I'm the only one that puts off that meeting with my partner or my spouse, or, Oh, I'm the only one that would say my finances are a mess or, <laughs> Oh, you know, and, and also that's some self-talk in old language because mm -hmm. they probably aren't, they're mm -hmm. probably not perfect. I don't know when they ever will be, but from where I started to where I am now, you know, it's so interesting. Yeah. And how that's, we talk to ourselves about it. And that's one of my favorite things about being connected and sharing testimony, sharing your story, women connected in wisdom, because when you start talking about it, I think with most things, you'll realize, of course, you're not the only one. Everybody has stuff in these categories to a certain extent and talk to themselves a certain way, because it, let's say in America, we're all in the same environment to a certain extent so we're conditioned the same so what you were taught i was taught we just didn't talk about the fact that we both knew and operated the same way right yeah all right so we got through the list yes of i'm, I'm taking us back to learning something new about finances yeah and that's number, so number four of the article right number yeah. four of the article and we're number two oh number three of the article three of five and we're number two on that learning. It's stacked. It's a really good stacked article. You know how I like stacked things. Yeah. So it's probably why it drew my attention. Mm -hmm. Number two is if you're looking to sit back and be entertained while learning, check out finance movies like The Big Short or Too Big to Fail. Mm -hmm. That's like we can have fun with this, right? Absolutely. I forget that sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to finances, which is funny because I have fun in almost all areas of my life. I just need to apply those interplay principles to finances. Yeah. I wonder how Number three, are you a podcast fi fanatic? Mm. <laughs> Maybe. If so, try out the Dave Ramsey show or women and money. Yes. And um, I really like the Dave Ramsey show for the, the personal stories. You know, you get so many people on there listening to their life, how they thought about money before, both individually, let's say as a couple, and then how they came together and also how it transformed and how they now think about money. And then it's countless stories like that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that testimonial. I'm yeah. curious about the women in money show. I don't know anything about it. Mm, me either. But I would I would think it's the same thing. You know, anytime yeah. you get personal stories with people that um, are similar to you in different ways, I think it helps you refigure the way that you think about things. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. OK, number four, looking for a bite sized newsletter that brings learning to your inbox. Subscribe to some like The Morning Brew or Easy Money. Mm -hmm. I love all these resources. Yeah. Like I. Yeah. All right, number five, looking for something a little more advanced. Maybe not, but maybe so. Yeah. Check out Khan Academy or Ed X's Finance for Everyone. I love this bite-sized financial, like just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just learn something new. 
Mm-hmm. You're always going for it. You always impress me, my friend, on how much you are studying this. And so I am going to take a page from your book this year and do a little more studying around this. Yeah. Yeah. And what I like about this article is how it changes it based on um, the type of person that needs the help. You know, do you like podcasts? Right. Do you like to read? Do you need community and education and mm-hmm. different ways to address the same the same topic? Because that's really important. Well, you know how we talk about in Still Point, we talk about self-care and we talk about community care and we talk about partnership power. And so I have always been attracted to, but have not done it yet, um, Mm -hmm. like a female investing group, like Mm -hmm. a group of women that are striving towards this together. Um, So I think I got to look into that again this year, like having an accountability group of women around this topic, I think would be really yummy. Let's do it. And let's do it in um, Women Connected in Wisdom. On the in our community? In the community. Yeah. Because I, I love it. I love That's that idea. I can't wait. I can't wait for a couple of things in my life. But investing, right? I'm definitely excited about it. Well, because even if we started with $5 or $10, you can do that now. You used to not be able to do that. You mm-hmm. know, when our parents were coming up, you had to have a certain chunk of money. And I think I that's why so many people didn't invest because they were mm-hmm. waiting until... You know, yeah. but nowadays, I mean, we'll have to look at the minimum investment, but yeah, let's do that in the Women Connected in Wisdom community. Let's start an investing group. And you know, that's it's so interesting that you say that because I almost feel that way about, well, I was going to say everything. That's not, I, I wouldn't necessarily say everything, but it's the same with the business. You know, before you had to have money for a brick and mortar and, and inventory to fill the store and everything that it takes to do that. Now you can set up an LLC and even have a digital product that might cost you zero dollars to make and then sell it and operate from your phone phone and a computer instead of spending twelve million dollars to build a restaurant or whatever it would have took before. So the the landscape is different. So the considerations and what's needed is different. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And just because our parents didn't do it doesn't mean we can't change, right? And learn and grow and have different opportunities. Absolutely. All right. There's two more overall on this big list. Okay. Um, Taking advantage of retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. So it says there's a reason why you hear everyone from financial advisors to parents talking about contributing to retirement plans. And it says they are a great savings vehicle. So it talks about IRAs. It talks about compounded interest. Mm-hmm. You were just talking about this, about your Instagram account. Uh, interest, yes. Yep. Okay. So and, it says it's a great way to give your future self a gift. And and for me, it was my past self. Uh, my 401k helped me last year, okay, when unemployment stopped coming in. So um, you usually don't want to touch it. But when situations happen, I was thankful to have automated, like we talked about on the first step, automated that percentage to come out of my account the first time I was salary. My company was meeting it. So I made sure I maxed out what they were meeting and I I definitely needed it. And I was glad to be able to benefit from it being there. What I will also say is right now, I think that um, a lot of times we think about retirement at 65. Based on my new financial literacy, I plan on, and we can play this episode back, okay? I plan on retiring by 45. So All right now. It doesn't have to be super far away. How are we being strategic about our finances and our time so that they can work to our good? Right. I know we've mentioned it on the show before, but um, the four-hour work week by Tim Ferriss, he also talks about not retiring. He's a little bit of a rebel. And sometimes some of his languaging I get like Ick, about, but mm-hmm. he's got some good strategies in there. But he also talks about not waiting to retire to create the life that you want. Mm-hmm. And you and I've talked about this on the show a lot. Like you're currently in a hotel room in South Carolina, yeah. zooming yeah. in, you know, I we've done the podcast from different countries even <laughs> since we've started. So the in the mountains, the, yeah. right? The, all different places, like creating that life you want while yeah. you're working towards this and while you're working towards financial wellness. Absolutely. Okay. I love it. All right. Last one. And I've <laughs> mentioned it before on my wisdom in action, but it's always a good reminder. And I think it's one of those things we've got to schedule. Number five, scheduling regular checkups for your accounts. Schedule a regular financial check-in for yourself so you can 
avo help avoid mistakes and ensure everything is in line with your current goals. Whether Absolutely. it's a monthly, quarterly, or annual check-in, you can use this time to review your accounts, mm -hmm. ensure your budget is accurate, and make any necessary changes, mm -hmm. consolidate investment accounts or bank accounts, and make sure you're on track to hit your goals. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to challenge the ladies to be even more specific, right? Based on the, the statistics before COVID, 78% of America was living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not waiting until the quarter. I would say every day, especially if you're uncomfortable with it, right? Mm -hmm. So you know what you're working with. Just like you can't eat if you don't have food in the refrigerator, if you don't have money to spend, you there's no money to spend and you need to know that before we're spending money. And so um, it was really interesting. I realized one day somebody said that checking your bank account is like, um, somebody with bad grades checking their report card. And I said, oh my goodness, that makes so much sense because I remember the anxiety people would have trying to literally change their grades. People get in trouble mm -hmm. with their parents because they're lying about what actually happened. But that's what we try to do with our finances. Let me move this over here so I have this money that's mm -hmm. not really here. And then we end up paying more money trying to, it, it's a crazy cycle. And so, and you know, I love to give the lady specific um details and again practical business systems so i'm going to break down mm -hmm. what i've been doing that's really helped me feel confident in knowing where i am so on the let's say on the less regular scale i pay bills right so on the 10th and 25th that's when i transfer money so it's not related to when i get paid it's always on the 10th and 25th that way the bills, when it hits the account, if it takes a few business days, it'll still be within that month. So for the month of January, I've transferred my money and I know where it is by the end of the month. And then just like a new day, I'm starting new. I start new every month. So if I need to pay a bill, if I need to move my money from my business, from my income account to my owner's compensation or my operations account, I'm doing all of those things on the 10th and 25th. Outside of that, I actually felt like, and that's based on the profit first system that we've talked about on the show. Um, I felt like that wasn't frequent enough for me. I felt like I would start spending money because I spend money, right? So we'll start spending money and I wouldn't know where my account was. I would try to wait till the 10th. Oh, I'll do it the 10th and 25th, but I wasn't knowing my numbers enough. So now I've actually challenged myself to have a finance Friday. So I'll go in and then if I need to move anything, right, I like alliteration and knowing which days things fall on. I never know what day it is, right? So finance Fridays, um, we're going to look at the account. And I also challenge myself to, to, to move the different percentages for my business on those days, right? So if somebody's paid um, or bought a Shea Local product from the website, I move the money from PayPal. If they've um, bought something in person, I'll move the money for Cash App and make sure the business money is not sitting on these other um, platforms and softwares, right? I'm getting it into my account and then I'm redistributing into the accounts that it should be based on what I need it to be. So I actually know how much I have for operations this week, how much we have for the taxes this week, how much we have for the owner's compensation so we can base our sales goal off of that so we can have the revenue that we want, right? So the 10th and 25th for moving money for those deadlines, finance Fridays, but then outside of that, it's also on my daily checklist with my email to just check the check the, the account, you know? So I just bought some labels from Avery. We're about to do production when I get back in town and I had to cancel it because I actually, something else happened. We don't have the three ounce containers from my vendor. So I'm like, let me cancel these labels and let me check my account to make sure they didn't pull the money out so I know where I am, you know? So that's specifically why I say every day, if it gives you anxiety, because that's gonna give you the most repetition and get comfortable with it. And then once you know your numbers, you set your budget and you know that you're not spending outside of that, you know you spent the $53 when you went out to eat and the $100 on Fashion Nova, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And that feel like Well, I think, no, it will, yes and. Yeah. You know, I, that big sigh was about how much prices are going up right now. And like you talking about spending $50 when you go out, like it feels like everything, like the inflation right now and everything's going up. Yes. And if we have <laughs> our 
mindset, I'm mm -hmm. guilty of this. Like if mm -hmm. I think, um, well, you know, I volunteer for reforming arts, which mm -hmm. is a program that uses the arts in higher education for people reentering, um, society after being incarcerated. Yes. And I was watching a video this week. And one of the things they were talking about is one of the things that's so hard about reentering society is you have in your head, like a burger costs a dollar 50, mm. right? And that burger is now 10 bucks, right? So if you're making plans, but I think, yes, it's dramatic when somebody has been taken off of society and they're coming back in. But I think yeah. for even every day, like I'll mm. have it in my head. Oh, you know, this costs this amount. No, right now it costs four times that amount. And if I'm not paying attention to my numbers, if I'm not being real about it, I can overspend in a heartbeat because yes. it doesn't cost $30 for my family to go out to eat anymore. It costs a hundred bucks without even blinking. And that's oh, no. not for fancy. That's just... You that's know. not even with everybody there. That's with one at school and, and somebody, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's not even at the table right there at that meal for a hundred dollars. Right. So I well, it used to, when you thought about a hundred dollar meal, you thought, oh, that was a drink. That was appetizers. That was dessert. That was an entree. Y'all never, not anymore. That's about an entree. And entree and a drink right? or two. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and that's why this is so important, you know, and um, I'm grateful for the stimulus checks. I'm grateful for the unemployment that I got when I was unemployed for COVID. That's how Shayla Globe started, you know, and I'm thankful for the wisdom and the financial literacy to know that I needed to start a business, but putting out the money caused it, it caused, increases inflation. And I saw this post the other day on social media. It was talking about how I think it was like 20 years ago, they said 20 years ago, or let's say 10, 10 years ago, minimum wage was $7.25. Now it's $7.25. Somebody made a good point though, but rent was 800 something dollars and now it's $1,400. So before, if you were financially wise, you were saving, right? If you have $10,000 in saving, it's gonna be gone in less than 10 months for just the rent by itself in this example, when before it would have lasted you a lot longer. So it's absolutely imperative that we get um, wise, that we get educated and that we know what's going on because saving is not gonna be enough. You know, We have to know how much we need to make, how we're gonna do that. And then when we get the money, what it's doing and knowing what job we're giving our, do our dollars. And that's what's been my goal. How am I a good boss to my dollars and where do I send them off to do their task? Well, I love that you play with it and you tell me the game you said you were playing again. Ooh, cash flow. Cash flow. Yes. Okay. Say and a little more about that. So I, I really love this game. I'm just start up front because we like to know the prices. It was about $60 and that's with the discount that they ran. But again, this is an asset because it's going to put money back in my pocket because it's um, changing the strategy that I think about money. Right. And so the, there's two different tracks that you're on. On one track is basically the rat race, right? And you're going around, there's a payday. And depending on which job you pull, at the beginning, you pull a card. Um, I've been a police officer. That was interesting, right? I've been an engineer. Um, and you have a certain amount that you make. At one game, I had three three children, right? That changes your expenses. And it, and it depending on what else might happen, it might lower your payday. So now you have more expenses, less money coming in. And the point is that anybody starting from anywhere can get out of the rat race, just like we were talking about out of the, the garage, right? This person was in a garage and now they're rich. So you, the point of the game is to get your passive income, which is income that you are not physically working for, to pass your expenses. So if my expenses are $1,200 a month, I need to get $1,201 a month and now I'm out of the rat weight race. I no longer have to work for my income. Something is paying for it without me physically being there. And now I can go on to other things. This is the fast track, right? So on the fast track, you have things like um, parks being named after you and safari trips and going to Africa is one of my things, right? Um, and it's interesting. It reminds me of this, this question I got. Linda, my mentor who actually passed away last year, we've talked about Linda again, cancer with these chronic illnesses and us taking care of ourselves, right? And she took great care of herself. Um, 
but she invited me to this entrepreneur event. And the host was like, if you guys had $10,000 right now, what would you do? And looking back, I realized with my financial literacy, I answered this question wrong, right? I had a sweet answer, but that's not what she was asking. She was asking about for your business, what would you do it for? I get on the mic and I'm like, if I had $10,000, I would take my mom to Africa because she says she wants to go and she's sick. And so I would love to take her to Africa. Since again, that's not what she was asking, right? Um, it was a sweet answer, but that's on the board, on the fast track, take a trip to Africa. So please believe that the first time we played this after Christmas, that was my goal and uh, I won the game. The first game I played, I did not make it out the rat race. My strategy was off. I was investing when I shouldn't have invested. Then I got downsized. That's part of the rat race too, right? Which we know is real life. And when you get downsized, you have to pay like all of your expenses. So I had just invested, didn't have the cash flow, had to pay like $3,900, something like that. I'm just sucking at the game. And now I was winning and I was able to go to Africa when I when I bought the game. So it's great. I love this. I yeah. love using play to teach ourselves. Exactly. I know we had talked about it. I didn't realize you got it. I'm so excited yeah. for you. I need to come over yeah. and we need to play this game. Yeah. You're probably going to kick my ass. but <laughs> <laughs> No, and that's what I love, though, because it's not about oh, I beat you. I'm the winner. We can go together. Let's, I love let's that. all go, you know, right? we could talk about it. We could talk about the strategy and there's a person that audits you so they can help you, you know? So, you know, it's That's great. Cool. For those reasons. Yeah. Well, I put a link to it in, uh, in our show notes for yeah. our listeners, because, um, you know, we want to share with them. I That's am looking at the time, Shannon, because we have just like, <laughs> um, we have a few more things to do before we close tonight, but we want to close on time today because, um, you know, I think we've whispered about it a little bit, but we are in the process of putting together 20 plus fabulous authors for our yes. listeners at Women Connected in Wisdom and doing a Women Connected in Wisdom book. Mm -hmm. So we have an author call tonight in a few minutes. So we're going to want to jump off here. But before we do, yes. what's happening over at Shayla Glow? Yes. So as always, and I usually don't have all three products, but I'm traveling. So actually, let me do it in order. So you guys know, I usually don't show the eight ounce containers. This is what, let me get it straight into the camera. This is our scrub and glow. And this is our dark brown sugar scrub. I'm always talking about it for exfoliation, right? Um, what people love about it is the fact that it keeps them moisturized as they exfoliate. Usually sugar scrubs dry you out. This one is not going to because it has that grapeseed oil and honey in it. I love mine. I love it. I love it's mine. Good. I used it just the other day. It's fabulous. <laughs> I right. can't hold on to it. It's crazy. Um, then the oil, the multi-use oil is great for your scalp, hair, skin, and nails. I love it because it's light coverage and it's not going to leave you oily. It has that MCT coconut oil in it, which is great for a lot of things, but especially pulling the moisture into your skin. And then we're going to seal it off with the Shalo Glow. And this is the Glow Butter. We just renamed all of the products. We've done the bigger sizes so you guys can have the home glow set if you know you need more and the travel glow set if you are traveling. Um, some of those products are sold out right now. Again, I talked about that in part of my, yeah, it's a great thing, all right, in part of my examples. But make sure you go online if you're looking for it. And I'm excited, Christine. We're about to start. We have, excuse me, started working with the SCAD students. And so we talk about gratefulness and the quiet time we take for ourselves. I love um, helping in, in seasons in transition, you know, and for me, that has been going back to the schools. I used to go talk at Hiram High School and, and hang out with the seniors and haven't been doing that since COVID. So to have the opportunity to help you ladies and your family take better care of you and to talk to the SCAD students, I'm just super mm. excited. Mm. I yeah. love it. Yes, I love you. it. Well, I have a few things coming up, so mm -hmm. I'll just drop my link link tree into our show notes if folks want to join me at a few events. But yeah. um, 
I am doing the Sovereign Women Living the New Earth Vision Telesummit. That's coming mm -hmm. up January 29th and 30th. And you will see, if you join us, you'll see some friends from the show on there. Because mm -hmm. uh, Carolyn Renee is one of the presenters with me and Cecile Armstrong. And so there's some folks y'all will recognize at that summit. And I will, I will put the link to join us on that. And then, you know, I'm doing an interplay 2022 playathon for 12 weeks and our guest next week marla is going to tell us a little more about that so i am i am excited my friend we have a lot of really delightful stuff coming up yes oh yes, before we, we go what's your wisdom in action this week Ooh, let's see last time my wisdom in action was knowing my numbers for my debt and I will say that my wisdom in action is closing the credit card. I'm All right. We're shutting it off. I am going to download one of those books we talked about today and start listening to it. Love so that. I'm going to do some financial literacy yes. this week. Yes, I love it. Okay, ladies, thank you so much for joining us as we delve into financial wellness. We will be back next Wednesday, live at five. In the meantime, be well, be wise, and be whole. See you soon. Yes.